Okay, welcome. Um, my name is Brian Sevis Edright. I'm the Head of Learning and Innovation at Matthew Flinders Anglican College. Um, and I'm incredibly thankful to Brian, uh, Vivian and the team for uh, allowing us to share our story with you today. Um, last year we were here and uh, it was raining I think about this time last year and uh, I was trying to um, sell an idea really. Um, I was trying my hardest to try and drum up a bit of sponsorship uh, without a vehicle here. Um, and it's, uh, and it's, it's really exciting that we're back this year with a, with a working vehicle that I drove here this morning. Um, so, incredibly excited by that. Uh, for, mo for those of you that are familiar with Flinders, um, you'll know that it's an incredibly good school that prides itself on uh, academic, sporting and musical excellence. Everything that we do at Flinders is around excellence. But what's sometimes less well known is that we also have a deep commitment to providing opportunities for students to connect with real world uh, problems, uh, to develop skills that will enable them to succeed when they leave school, um, and uh, really equip them with some idea of how they can make a difference in the world when they leave Flinders. So um, there is no doubt that the school, uh, that the world that our children are inheriting from us is a very different place to the one that we grew up in. Um, there's so much unpredictability uh, about what the future holds for them. Um, it's vital that schools like mine um, really provide those uh, real-world future orientated skills. Um, students need to be agile in their thinking, they need to come up with innovative solutions to the world's problems, um, they really need to uh, experience things that help them to be creative, help them to be flexible. Um, Schools, get, uh, schools are asked to teach kids to be creative or teach kids to be problem solvers or to teach kids to be agile in their thinking. We, those things are very difficult to teach without actually giving the kids the opportunities to be creative or to solve problems. And so um, this project was born out of that desire really. It was born out of a desire to talk to kids about sustainability, talk to kids about the future and to provide them with a, an authentic experience. And um, today I was going to quickly share my story. I've got James, my, uh, my valued partner in crime, with me. Um, it wouldn't be possible without, uh, without James and his team at Traction ED, who helped us um, with all sorts of technical aspects. Um, and he'll talk to you about those much more eloquently than I will. So, um, the initial idea came from a conversation uh, that we had at school about how we could introduce new, new projects, innovative projects. The IT team came up with this wacky idea that we could convert a vehicle. Um, we pitched the idea to the board um, and uh, there was a, a lot of positivity in the room, I've got to say. They listened intently to what we had to say and uh, caught the excitement, I guess, that we had and um, the project was established. Uh, the board gave us the green light. Um, and I'm forever grateful to them. Um, and uh, our friends at British Off Road down in Forest Glen um, actually uh, managed to source us a really beautiful old, slightly knackered, um, 1974 uh, long wheelbase uh, Series 3. Um, and the boys set to work. And we had some uh, 12 uh, students studying industrial uh, tech that. Uh, took the project on board. They were so excited. You should have seen the look on their face when this car was being delivered. Um, so this is a course where students would, historically, they might make a chair, or they might um, they might do something really innovative, like weld something together. Um, for these boys, seeing a, a 1974 Land Rover roll off the off off a transporter and say, "There you go, it's yours. Uh, we're going to convert it." So that's what they did. So they took it apart. They um. They literally took every single panel off. Um, when we stripped the whole thing down, we realised that the 48-year-old uh, chassis was completely shot. Um, and the guys at British Off Road came to our rescue again. They took it away over Christmas last year. Um, and then when I came, when the students came back in January, we had a lovely reclaimed galvanised chassis uh, waiting for the new panels to be put back on. Um, so the boys just rubbed everything down, cleaned off. Uh, 48 years worth of oil and grime and gunk and nastiness, took all the exhaust system out, the engines out, um, all the running gear. We established an EV club which met weekly after school. 
Uh, they took out care of all the finances, um, all the accounts, all of the marketing. Um, we managed to source some sponsorship um, uh, and exhibiting here last year helped us with that really. Um, and then we, we got the project off the ground. Um, James and uh, his team at Traction EV did a wonderful job supplying us with all of the EV components. Um, we had students uh, marketing the designs for the new vehicle. Um, those of you that know, Flinders has a mascot, which is the Beast of Budrum, which is this uh, very real beast, apparently, that still stalks the forests of Budrum. Um, and so they branded the vehicle as the E-Beast. Um, our gold sponsor, uh, Ken Mills Toyota, um, they were a little bit disappointed that we didn't use a Toyota, um, but they were happy enough to still sponsor us as long as we removed all notion of the word Land Rover. So it's not a Land Rover, it is an E-Beast. Um, so yeah, they laser cut things, we designed new um, prototypes for, uh, for grills, all that sort of stuff. Um, got down and dirty, repairing everything, ready for the new uh, shiny new motor to go in from James at Traction EV. So this is getting prepared for the, uh, for the motor. The motor will sit on the mounts so that are in the chassis. Um, there's us trying to problem solve a few things about how to get it to go all fit together. Um, and then that's our uh, incredibly uh, technological hoist. That's two year 12s. <laughs> how much does that motor weigh? Roughly 50 kilos. Yeah, 50 kilos. So we didn't want to drop it. Um, lining everything up. Um, just to prove that we did have some girls working on the project, which we're very proud of. Um, so there was three girls that were part of that EV team. Um, and uh, wiring is probably the biggest issue when you're doing a conversion like this. 12 volts fine, but the one thing that we couldn't let the students anywhere near was the high voltage wiring. Um, they got down and dirty with pretty much everything else. Um, but the high voltage we left to uh, the professionals. We were lucky at school that we had an on-site electrician um, and we could kind of... Uh, he helped us out with a lot of that high voltage stuff um, and James came and helped us with it as well. Um, and uh, James and Dan produced a beautiful battery box for us um, with a Union Jack coming to the top of it, which um, I think you're very proud of, and I think it's a really nice touch. So, um, and we are where we are now with a, with a converted Land Rover that I drove from my house today to here. Um, the students are incredibly proud, um, as they should be. Um, We've got a lovely new paint job over Christmas, um, a paint shop at Calandra um, helped us out there and uh, we are where we are now, which is with this beautiful um, Land Rover. Um, it couldn't have been achieved without James so, um, and we are, we're still up here as a bit of a double act because he's the technical guru that really made it happen. He supplied all of the battery boxes and all of the hard graphs and all of the innovations um, because it really hasn't been done before. No school in Australia has ever compared to that. A, a 50 year old car um, and it couldn't have happened without James. So I'm going to shut up and I'm going to hand over to James and then I'll take any of your questions later. Hi everyone, uh, I'm James Pauley, the owner of Traction EV. Uh, we're located down in Morayfield, to Um As Ed said, we supply the parts uh, to Matthew Flinders for them to convert their Land Rover to electric. Um, but I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Mark and his guys from British Off-Road. I know those guys played a big part in that conversion. Um, they put in um, a number of hours uh, in the build as well, and um, yeah, we couldn't have done it without them as well. Um, so you would have seen the students there lifting the motor into the engine bay in, in some of uh, Ed's photos there. So attached to that motor was an aluminium adapter plate. So we design and fabricate parts like that, the battery boxes that go in. So to convert any car, you've got really specific parts that you need so that you can bolt these electric motors and batteries up into them. So we design those in our workshop um, so that we can convert, convert your cars. Um, so we mostly convert classic cars and um, collector cars, things like that. We've Places like this, events like this, we always get so many questions. Oh, can you convert my 2005 or 2017 such and such vehicle? And we usually say, well, it's probably cost prohibitive. Um, there's a whole row of brand new OEM vehicles that you can buy that are already.
already electric, we usually steer them that way. But if you've got an enthusiast vehicle, a collector vehicle, or something like that, um, you know, if you want to build a muscle car or a track car or a race car, then yeah, we're, we're more than willing to help you out uh, convert that to electric. Um, so we've done a lot of old classic Beetles. Um, that was one of the first cars we ever converted, so of course everyone sees one and they, they want one of them. Um, so they've been really popular, but we'll convert almost any, any classic car to EV. Um, so this is a, a customer's car. This is a, a father and son project. Uh, they're from they're in Brisbane. Uh, they built the car together from scratch, fully restored it, stripped it down, painted it, um, and converted it using one of the kits that we sell uh, for a Beetle. So um, kits in the past were pretty bare bones. You had to assemble all of the wiring harness and um, crimp everything together. As uh, Ed and his students know, it's a, a big job hooking up all the individual pieces. Um, but uh, we're developing this into a completely plug and play kit, so it'll be much easier to assemble uh, going forward. Um, where a build probably took the average person six to 18 months to do from home, um, we estimate someone should be able to do it in six months pretty easily, bolting it all together. Uh, so this is uh, DC fast charging um, at QUT in Brisbane City. Um, so they'll be able to recharge that car in an hour, which is pretty handy. And um, we can put a 35 kilowatt hour pack into a Beetle, so that'll let the car go around 220 kilometers on a charge. Uh, the, the school's Land Rover that you saw had a 37 kilowatt hour pack. Um, that should get it about 150 k's on a charge. Um, you can fit more battery into it, but obviously more battery is more cost. So the, the build was done to a budget and to a price, so didn't need to go 500 k's on a charge. So that's how we built it. Um, yeah, Max, the owner of this build, is a budding photographer, and he kindly lets use his photos from his Instagram. Uh, so this is another customer's beetle that we did uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, the owner's down in Sydney um, using one of our kits. Uh, that beetle also has air conditioning, which is really nice. Um, it's super efficient. Um, only uses about 3% of the range to run the aircon, uh, which is a pretty nice thing to have. Um, the Nissan Skyline there beside it, that's also electric. I converted that. That was my personal first conversion about five years ago. Um, the battery pack was going to die a very horrible death if I pushed it any further. Uh, that car is making about 600 horsepower and the battery pack was being stretched to its limits. It was probably going to catch fire if I pushed it any further. So I pulled the battery out and uh, like a lot of mechanics, their car gets pushed to the back of the line before any custom cars. So there it's waiting for a new battery pack, but uh, I hope to have it going again shortly. Uh, so this is the short wheelbase Land Rover that we've got in the workshop at the moment. Uh, we did this sort of in tandem, side by side with the school's Land Rover. So we were using it uh, for prototyping to develop the battery boxes and motor adapter plate. So um, the parts that we're going to go into ours, we were inching our way closer to getting all the parts in, and then Matthew Flinders <laughs> said, uh, "We'd like to convert a Land Rover." Like so we. We kindly sent our parts to them so that they could get their build build going. Um, up on the lift there behind it, you can see a 73 Combi. Um, that's got 75 kilowatt hours of Tesla battery, so that'll make that go roughly 350 k's on a charge. And it's got DC fast charging and dual zone air conditioning. That's a really nice car. That was a Rolling chassis looked pretty scary when we first saw it. Was it just in black primer? I thought, geez, what are you bringing us? Why are we converting this for you? But after it came back from the paint shop, we, we were pretty excited. And that's off getting its uh, custom interior done. Um, yeah, really, really nice car. And that's got a small Tesla motor in it. So it's no gearbox, just single speed, put your foot down and go. And uh, 300 horsepower in a combi. So. Pretty exciting. <laughs> and of course you can turn that power down. You don't have to drive around like a hot rod if 
if you don't want to, but come on. <laughs> so we design a lot of the custom parts in-house with all the battery boxes and um, cool amounts and things like that. We design everything in CAD um, and that way we can uh, repeat the process again. So these first two Land Rovers were pretty slow um, to get them going, all the R&D that goes into it, but once we've done one, we can repeat it and do it again and again much, much quicker. Um, all the parts are in CAD on the computer, we can just order them again. Um, so you can see the Tesla motor in the rear there, it's just bolted straight to the axles, so no gearbox, just put your foot down and go. Um, all of the electrical EV stuff in this combi is all exterior to the cabin too, so the customer wanted nothing out of the ordinary electric vehicle inside of the cabin so that they could do a full custom interior any which way they wanted. So it was a, it was a hard thing to achieve to keep all of that stuff outside of the cabin. It was very tempting to put one of those battery boxes inside of a cabinet or something. Um, but uh, we managed to keep it all outside. Um, so we're pretty happy with that. Yeah, this is uh, the front, the top of the front battery box in our short wheelbase Land Rover. So it's got the same Union Jack on top, and uh, we've got clear perspex. So, knowing that that box is going to a school, we thought it'd be really nice to have a clear opening at the top of the box. So you could actually see the battery cells inside. Let students and anyone who's interested be able to actually see inside of the battery box. So that's a reclaimed Tesla battery module. So we're getting them from crash Teslas. Um, from all around Australia, but uh, the demand for those has gone crazy, so um, it's hard to get a steady supply, so um, we've gone to a, a brand new module. Um, yeah, yeah. so um, yeah, that's a little bit about us. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you uh, for having us up here. Yeah. One of the things that James alluded to there, I think it's really interesting, is like, with innovation, when you're doing something for the first time, it's really interesting how things pan out, not really how you plan them, but the, the relationship between James and our school and British Off-Road has been a really interesting like triangulation of just of just three different, completely different partners, all trying to achieve a similar thing and all helping each other out synergistically at the same time. And so it's been really exciting in that respect and really interesting. And once again, on behalf of Flinders, I thank James and British Off-Road for everything they've done for us. Thank you. Thank you.